Hello everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to be having cats knock boxes around me, apparently. Percy, you're going to keep on knocking things when I'm saying hello to everybody? Today, I'm going to live stream um, on Twitch the, my first ever grinding of Chinese ink. So... This is kind of be a long-winded, rambly-type video. Uh, kind of just hanging out, exploring, and um, yeah, just having fun. So, like I said, it'll be on Twitch, and then I'll upload it onto uh, YouTube at a later date. So if I start randomly talking to people, it's because they came into the live chat and were saying hello. So, with this... Let's um, kind of see what we got and kind of talk about where this is coming from. So uh, with uh, the Chinese ink, about four years ago, I started, um, I got back into painting and I did the Chinese brush painting. And I used ink that would come in the bottle. In fact, I think this is the first, still the first bottle. That I had a little bit goes such a long way. I picked this up from um, Hobby Lobby. They have it on Blick.com. They have it on Amazon. This Yasutoma brand, um, kind of really all over the place, and they're really uh, prolific. I think they have a lighter black. They have a black with uh, silver in it. A black with um, gold flakes in it. I have those. I need to play around with those on video one day. But anyway. I used this and it was kind of a, um, a convenience thing. And, you know, for $10, it's fantastic. And like I said, just a little bit went such a long way for me. Then, in the meanwhile, you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably seen it. There's these little um, Chinese painting kits that are often given out as like gift sets where it'll have um, maybe a little soapstone. It'll have a little um, porcelain or whatever pot of the stamp in it. It'll have a few brushes. Usually the outside's kind of green. and It's on that fabric and it folding hinge. That thing. I don't know if I had bought one or my friend had gifted me one that somebody had gifted them and they never used it. I think the brushes from it got used. This uh, paperweight might have came from one of those. These sticks definitely came from it. As well as these grindstones. Or inkstone. So I never got around to actually trying it. I think maybe I did a little bit once, but it was kind of tedious or I didn't know exactly what I was doing because... Apparently there's a lot of technique involved in this. And then another part of me was like, well, these might be crummy ink sticks because, you know, everybody kind of says the ink sticks, where they're made, how they're made, you know, mean a lot. So even looking at them, I could tell that this one has kind of a glossy finish and this one has a matte finish. This one has some perforations and holes this one doesn't but it almost seems to have kind of like a mica flake in it but anyway like this guy i guess you wouldn't grind this side because you could scratch your stones there's a whole bunch that goes on behind it and it was kind of overwhelming i think we had picked up this set which is probably some cheap set for like $3 uh, in a clearance section. And I guess it would be the colors that would be ground. But they never got used. Looking at it, this one has cracks in it. And I'm not sure if these things were ever quality things. So they never, like I said, never got used because is there a price tag on it? Okay, so it's from Hobby Lobby, $6. And I think it was on clearance, so it would have been cheaper than that. 
So anyway, these kind of just sat in drawers for a while. And um, doing the brush painting again, I guess I just started reading about the ink stones and ink sticks. And I ordered two off of Amazon. And I figured I'd make a video playing around with them. So the two that I ordered, apparently there's two basic types and I put labels on the inside so that I would know. Um, on Amazon, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, even though I'm gonna try to pronounce it. Hukawan, Hukaiwan, I think it's a factory that's famous for making uh, these ink sticks. That brand had popped up a lot on Amazon. I think I got it through the seller, um, Easy U. E A S Y O U. I bought art supplies from them in the past and they've always been good, so that's why I'm just mentioning that name. Anyway, then from there in research, I think there's two to four different variations of ink sticks. Some that's made with burning oil, like vegetable oil. And then other that's made with pine soot. I think that's the two basics. And then I think it breaks down further from there into different types. There's even ones with like um, a lacquer in it and other things. But I decided to get an oil smoke one and a pine soot one. And the pine soot one was even advertised as a little bit bluish. Um, I believe there's kind of like almost like a warm and a cool gray that comes from them. That's part of this long video's experiment, just seeing what happens with them. Um, I am going to pick one to play with first, and I'll try to get both played with in this video. We're going to do the blackish pine soot. And these stones are just like really works of art, these ink sticks. And I think there's people that will collect them and collect uh, vintage antique ones. If they come in different sizes, different decorations. Um, I believe the leaves on this tree in the advertisement on Amazon were bluer, but overall it's very pretty. And I wonder, as you grind the stick, how these gold flakes mica whatever it is affects the ink that's one of the questions that i've been having but i'm not really sure where to ask these things i did join some um chinese calligraphy uh and painting facebook pages and i did start asking questions but i don't want to overwhelm people now these stones i'm not sure if they're real stones or if it's a fake light material. I can see kind of faint circles of how I guess it would be cut out from a rotary type tool on that one. This one I can see it there too, a round little bit. I don't think you'd be able to catch it. Let's see. They have a whole bunch of different styles of inkstones. In fact, they have these really beautiful ones on eBay or that I would like to get one day where imagine it's a flat stone and then you have a chip taken out of it and I guess you would grind and then it would pool in that little chip and it would look like um, I guess a little puddle or a lake in there but you know that's kind of just an aesthetic thing I'm sure there's different materials and whatnot the main difference that I did see between these two is that one has a pool dip down here. There's apparently different names for the different areas of these stones. And um, I wasn't exactly sure the different uses. Some I think had used the pool to collect the ink water, while others I think put water there and pull the water from it. Not quite sure. If you made it this far into this video, <laughs> it's going to be a long one, I think. Let me know if you know anything about that. 
Oh, a few other things that I've learned in the research is that with grinding it, you can pull in that fashion. You can grind in that fashion, back and forth. But I think the best way is to hold it and put your finger on top and circular motion because it's consistent. Where here, you'd have uh, less surface area touching, so you'd have more pressure. You'd have more pressure. I wonder if they would do it like that, it would be more pressure. And you'd have that flat, and you'd be more consistent. And the amount of water that gets utilized is very minimal. In fact, I'll put a drop of water there. I even saw one where you put the drop and spread the water with your finger and then from there start grinding now the grinding process i believe is labeled as just incredibly um tedious there's uh one video that i watched where a gentleman was doing it and uh, making light of it and having fun with it and joking. He did use some foul language, so um, check it out and just be careful if you have kids watching. <laughs> but um, he really knew what he was doing and really um, seemed to enjoy the process, even though he was joking about it. One thing that I forgot to mention, I have a terrible sense of smell. And COVID made my smell even worse. Like, I don't know if it's completely back to normal. However, one of these, when I opened it, was super fragrant. And this one, I'm, I'm literally, I'm pulling it up to my nose and smelling it. it. Has an earthy, piney scent. Almost a little... Yeah, a little fragrance to it. Put another drop of water in there. Some people, when I was reading reviews, will complain about the scent of different brands. Some have different scents added into them, uh, either like a perfume or uh, Chinese medicine in it, which is quite interesting. Um, I also wonder, and I, I'm talking about everything from the Chinese standpoint, I'm not Chinese, I'm just saying it like Chinese brush painting, but I wonder if the same thing is for Sumie or Sumi painting. There is a, um, crossover between the two you know all um, the cultures and the arts built upon each other over there it feels like nice and that a paste is taking place you've seen how much I've dropped on it I'll show you what the end of the stone looks like um, Even though I'm blabbing during this, it's supposed to be a contemplative practice. I think you would um, do this and you would envision the artwork that you're going to create from it. I'm not going to jump into artwork with it. I have a few different pieces of paper alongside me that eventually, once I feel like I have enough ink built up, I'll then um, see how it looks on the different ones. So I guess one thing that I can um, think about
is the tonal ranges and color that I want to get from it. How I'm going to uh, brush it on, etc. But this would be a great time to paint the picture of like a bamboo in your head and think about how the bamboo would lay. And then from there, by the time you're done grinding, you'll be good. There is writing on the side, writing on the top, writing on the back. I wish I had some inkling, pun intended, of what those things say. One thing I've been unsure of is Do I pull ink directly from the stone and paint from there? In that one video that I referenced, that's what the gentleman had done. Just kind of sampled, like shown calligraphy and writing with it. And when I posted onto a Facebook page for Chinese painting, Sumie. They had said, um, some people had said, pull directly from the stone. Other people had said, transfer to a container and then add water to each one. I can't imagine how much I would have to do of this to viably transfer any of it. I did watch one video of how to, um, load the brush with ink from the stone. I wish I knew the face uh, YouTube page. I would, um, I would, I would mention it. It was, um, something Sumie. What I will do is I'll lay this on the side. That was a important point that some people had mentioned. And um, I have some Bristol paper right here. I snagged it because it was um, small and would fit where we're working. I will say that holding it does hurt a little bit after a while, but it's not something I'm used to doing. And I'll pull directly from the stone just so we could see where we're at. I don't even know if I'm supposed to wet my brush first or not. Let's, I guess I could try both or no, nope, I'll pull directly from it. We'll do that. So this would be the darkest concentration. have it to a point. Oh, all right. <laughs> now I'm a little excited. Let's see. This is our uh, bluish black pine soot. It does go on quite dark. So I'm probably, oh, I have a, a brush rest I bought back in the day. Now, how can we go about transferring this? Let's just add a little bit more water while we think about how we can do that. I think uh, another thing is stone maintenance. The thing that I'm grinding on is that it needs to be cleaned up after each session. Reason being, um, I believe it might be a porous material and it could soak in there, it could ruin the texture of it. 
There's animal binding glue in the ink stick itself that can cause um, issues and I think that make the stone smell. So let's see. Okay. Now let's see how we can uh, transfer ink over. This is, I don't know if they refer to it as a plum palette. And to simply get better tones, I'm just going to do add this one to a drop of water. Add this one to two drops of water. If you know of a better way, please let me know. Add this one to three drops. We could probably get even lighter. One, two, three, four, because that's how the sequence of the math goes. Let me get way lighter. One, oh, that's a whole bunch. Definitely more than four. Okay. Now, if I need to uh, dry them off more, I will. Let's see how the color looks. This is um, some maintenance right here. You want to clean off and dry off the bottom of the inkstone. I'm not sure if that would uh, cause premature rotting or anything else to take place. So here's our dark. I have a big old thing of water on the side. A little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. We'll see if there's any gradation in them. Put this guy on the side. I have some cotton paper. So I'll put the Bristol paper board down. I wonder if you could add directly water into here, or if that's a, a faux pas. It must be acceptable. I don't know if I'm getting the gradation from each pot of water. I might have to mix it in this fashion. So I'll start with the 
dark. Definitely add some water just to the brush. Let's see. some um, scroll type paper here I may have had to need it to grind more ink so it does go pretty quick So this is supposed to be the bluish one. I'm going to hold them to the camera in a few, but I'm not seeing any bluishness. I'm going to grab a tear of rice paper and we'll see. Little known fact, the surface of this table that I have, the reason I have this felt on top was because of the Chinese brush painting. You would use a felt underneath, you wouldn't need a board. I think unfortunately this one isn't the best experiment because of how, um, like I said, I, I'm out of ink, or at least the darker ink. So let's see. I'm going to uh, clean off this stone. I'll use the other stone just so there's kind of no not really cross contamination but yeah if i'm trying a different stone and trying to compare the two inks i think that'd be the best way to do it have two different stones for us to look at i'm just wiping this one down and i'll do a better wash underneath the sink i guess i'll use um water and just wipe it down. And pulling out the ink out of here. I guess at the end we could do the Yasa Tomo ink just to compare with these two as well. But um, let's see this one first. This is the Pine Soot Bluish. You can see the depth of the dark. Um, my hand's a little shaky. See the depth of the dark. I think that uh, I would benefit from more grinding with it, probably another five minutes, but I'm thinking that the, the small application of water that I did very slow manner was very beneficial. You can see some variety in this. And this is the, uh, the Bristol board. Uh, Bristol paper. Then from there, so I'm just showing you a little bit better. We have 
the hundred percent cotton. This is should be Stonehenge Aqua paper. You can see that I still had the deep dark, but that's where I started to lose my deep dark with all the other water on the brush. Um, so this is all tonal variety from that one ink. This is it's not dry yet. This is kind of a, I think a scroll paper that I had bought from, um, I might have got it from Hobby Lobby actually. It's not completely dry. Then the back of this material is definitely different, so it must be sized on one side. This side, it's not. This fell is still damp too. That's when I started losing the dark completely what I mixed. So in the next one that we do, which will be the oil soot, I'll try to make a bigger pot of ink. So that was my main concern, which I guess held true. This guy is dry already. We can use this stone. Put this fellow away. Yeah, this one I, I'm smelling the box. It's super fragrant. There's definitely something ritualistic about it and meditative. I can't imagine. Spending, well, I guess I can, you know, if you are a thinker and a writer and a painter, you know, we all need kind of time to um, reflect and relax. And I can understand how this would be, I guess, part of the, the process. I'm just holding this one to the uh, camera. See, I think I read somewhere that the ends might say what the um, composition of it is. I'll have to uh, check, but this one should be the oil soot when the last one was the pine soot. I think right away I could start adding more water. There you go. I'm sorry, there's also kind of either ideas or tidbits that people can hopefully recommend where with the initial grinding my pressure is the same as it was before but we heard it a little bit more until we added that second drop of water so um, learning about that is uh, another question that needs to be asked You don't want to grind too hard because you could break off um, bigger chunks and not like a chunk that we can see. I think it would actually just be particle size and but that could affect how things are. I mean we know that from watercolor painting with how well ground down a pigment is or if a pigment is granulated or not. 
In fact, one of the oil paint companies that I use, one that I really enjoy is the, um, the Williamsburg oil paints. And those have a lot of, um, have some that are gritty. Like they're advertised as being physically gritty. And um, it definitely changes the feel when painting. And I think it does have some vis visual influence. So these uh, ink sticks are definitely works of art. And the stones themselves. I wish I knew how to read the language that is written on them. I am switching hands just because this is just not emotion that I'm used to. I'm sure um, I'm being on the more timid side with my pressure application. At least I hope I am. I can't see myself doing this every day, but I think sitting down once in a while and doing this, especially if we could see nice variation between this and uh, pre-bottled ink, Maybe worth it. Now we can add more water. I guess there's a point you'll I'll hopefully start learning when to add more water. I don't know if we gave this one a smell test. This one, oddly enough, has that faint hint of pine as well. I'm not sure if it's from my hands from the previous one because this one is supposed to be the oil soot or if what I'm calling pine is a additive that's added to both of them. In one video, um, a gentleman used instead of an eyedropper, he used his uh, brush and pinch the end of the brush to drop the droplet of water onto the stone. I think one compositional ink stick is supposed to be better for painting while the other is better for uh, calligraphy, or maybe both are good for calligraphy, but one is better for painting. One thing I will say is that I have read, you know, some people say, just go with, um, or heard, just go with the bottle ink due to the ease. I guess um, that brings us to a philosophical question. The grinding, the preparation, the knowing of the material, how much does that play a part in the painting ability? Liquid ink being easier to pour out lets you jump right into the painting process. Um, getting more practice, getting more painting time. How does that affect your ability to learn? So we all know practice makes perfect. And ink grinding would limit practice.
but it also puts yourself in that mindset of relaxing and thinking about the painting. I guess you would then have to say practice without purpose, like a, a, a thoughtless practice, wouldn't be beneficial. So when you practice, you have to be mindful, right? It's easy to lose that mindfulness. I feel like there is more water on this one than the last. hoping that we can see a difference between the two inks. From the last one, and speaking of mindfulness, we I learned that I do need to create a larger quantity of ink. I'm not right-handed, so I'm not not really dexterous my, my right hand. Though the um, I can tell that I am getting a little faster with it and there might be a point where you just say to yourself, all right, I'm done grinding. Crystal paper ready. I probably should get fresh water, even though, yeah, I'm going to get fresh water. Just to play it safe, just so we can be more scientific. Sit it on the edge so it doesn't glue itself to the stone. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go rent, jump this water out. Super quick, wasn't it? Let's fresh paper towel. Pull moisture from this brush. Let's see how this ink compares. So this is oil soot. Okay, it seems to be pretty dark. So what I'll do is I'll transfer it over like we did last time. I think I may have it a little bit more watery than our previous one.
We're going to have to add some water in a moment. Drop of water. Give it a drop. I'll try thinning out in a different way. One, two, three, four. I don't think it's my imagination. I think that this one is on the warmer side than the previous. I'll hold it up to the camera. The left side is the um, pine soot, bluish shade. The right side, even though it's still drying, it's the oil soot. I think there is a visual difference. Holy cow. That is really exciting that I did not waste my money on um, you know, there, there is a difference between the two. Okay, so this is the cotton paper. Just gonna grab some water. Just try to get tones. It seems like I'm just better at just watering down using water from the um, the water well, uh, my whatever my water pot would be called. Okay, so once again, the right side is the uh, oil soot, a little bit warmer tone than the, uh, the left side, the blue shade. So I don't think it's necessarily blue as it is just uh, whatever the terminology would be for you know, cooler color. That might be what the, um, I don't know, so much of a translation as it is just the concept there. I do think I need to wash off that ink stone quick. Here we are on the rice paper. That one I'm going to have to let dry to really compare the two. So I'll let that one sit for a moment, but I'll grab that kind of scroll paper. Let's see if I can grab the darker that I got. It might be a little different on this because we have toned paper here. But I mean, visually here on my end, I can, I can see that there is a difference beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let me put this line right there. So we can get them super close to each other. So this one's still wet, but hopefully you'll see the left side is kind of that grayer. The right side is um, maybe a burnt umbery mixed with the um, almost a burnt umber. I'm not sure. Let me clean this ink stone. Uh, we still have that other one we have to look at that's dry, uh, drying off. And we do have to do the uh, liquid ink to compare these. Okay, so that is wiped off. Move this aside.
I think I am biased towards the second one because of how I don't know has more life while the other one's the bluish gray but I did read something once I was talking about an artist talking about juried competitions I've never done a painting competition or a juried competition or anything like that um, but the painter said create a painting submit two paintings one that is on the warm side and one that is on the cool side uh, because you never know what the juror the person doing the judging would think and how they would feel I'm going to put this stone up part of me is almost wondering if we should grind like a cheap this stone that I have shown but that, that might just be too much at this point for the video but we will try out the um, the bottle ink all right so this guy should be good it's weird having um, I don't want to use the word reverence because that might just be a little weird but having a um, no respect for the uh, art supplies because no, you have to uh, with these guys you have to make an effort to get something out of it and you have to learn the ink and the inkstone and how it would affect it. It's just uh, a little interesting. That rice paper one does take longer to dry. I don't want to um, pull out the blow dryer on this video, so we'll see if you can see. Yeah. Now, for convenience, let's just jump right into the sink, which regardless, I'll, I'll say it right now, not sponsored by Yasutoma or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to stop using this ink because there you go, <laughs> we have that ink right there and it makes it so much easier to, to practice. Um, so it may be practice, practice, practice with this, and then on dedicated like some of the some of the paper stuff for um, the Chinese painting. I, I don't have any silk type stuff. I'm, I don't think I could ever afford the silks, and um, I don't think anybody's looking to buy anything that's you know like a silk drapery type thing for me which I mean I would love to be able to offer something like that and sell it but a scroll work that's made out of silk is um, easily $30 just to buy the that piece so you, this one advertises itself on being super dark and that is very obvious. This is the um, Bristol paper. We are able to get different tonal values out of it. You know, from the obvious dark to that light. And I'm sure with a little bit more playing around, we can get a little. Um, you know, more variety out of it. It's still drying, so there's a little sheen to it. 
but this was our bluish um, pine soot Chinese uh, ink stick that we ground. This was the oil soot for me. This is Yasu's home, so you see how this one's much darker. Let me uh, move it there. There we go. I think this one's closer to oil soot, the Yasutoma, than the pine soot. And I think that would make sense for mass production of something like that. One thing that was said as a negative for the, the liquid inks was the excessive amount of animal binder or the glue in it or gum arabic and i don't know if i mentioned that earlier and i'm not sure um you know like like within watercolor you know if you have more binder you have less pigment but i don't know how that affects these i'd have to like take a super good photograph once these are dry to compare Let's um, get the rice paper out the way, and we'll let the rice paper dry. Go pure with it. I wonder if it's just harder to get light with this. Because my, my, my wash water is already, this is pretty much wash water right there. guy sitting on the side to dry we'll do the scroll paper which I think is just sized differently but it's also tinted blatantly obvious black pretty much just wash water dang can I even get it go all that one sits for a moment we'll look at our Stonehenge aqua our favorite paper I'm sure paper has an influence on the tone this one it's a little bit harder to see the variation between all of them. Let me move this out the way. This came with one of those little kits for a little bit of water to add for the grinding. It's, um, I used water from the sink. And I uh, hope that the shelf so while I do my cleanup on camera while these guys dry so I think I'm gonna eventually I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm going to um, probably do a new video where I'll grind and then paint we'll see There just must be so much pigment in that um, the bottle ink, which is amazing because I know we like super dark dark and be able to go super light light, and that makes me wonder: Did I grind as much as these could have been? I have to wash that guy good. So let's see. We're gonna hold it up. Uh, Yasutoma bottled ink. Yasutoma bottled ink, our bluish ink stick, pine soot, and our oil soot, oil smoke. Bluish ink stick, 
on the left. Oil soot, Nastatoma bottled on the bottom. You can see good variation here. Uh, blue ink stick, pine uh, oil soot, Nastatoma bottled. I'm just amazed that the Bristol board has such variety. Blue, um, pine soot, pine soot, oil soot, bottled ink. I'm almost thinking I'm going to paint on one of these for the next one. But we'll see. Anywho, let me move these to the side. I hope uh, I hope you just enjoyed. You know, it's just a hangout video, just trying something out. It was um, kind of a you know sit down and commit to actually trying this process. And at the end of the day, I would think that the bottled ink would win just because of how easy it is. Um, but if I was a proficient painter with brush, uh, ink, um, the grinding would definitely win because of the potential vari variation of the sticks. And once you find that stick that gives you the exact subtlety that you want, I'm sure you can make that ink sing. So um, I'll definitely continue doing this. I am going to do an ink painting with the grindstone, so I'm going to do another one. Um, but yeah, and I think it's going to be with that oil soot. So hope you all take uh, have a great day. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you all think down below, and any hints, advice, tips. Um, Rumors, myths, anything like that, let me know down below in the comments. You'll have a great day, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.